that doesn't actually stop the aggression at all. That is just waiting for the aggression to stop on its own accord. But there are some months in the pregnancy where it would be lethal. The only option for her to evict is a lethal way. And that's where evictionists say you're still allowed to evict there. You know, if I wanted to evict the baby, is it justified to pick up the baby and drop the baby like 5,000 feet? I can't make a contract with somebody who will be born a thousand years from now because they don't exist yet. Mm -hmm. It's not even, I don't think it's even like that because they aren't like progressively leaving the womb the entire time. They get into your, in, they get into the womb and then they grow a whole bunch. They just sit there for basically nine months okay. and then leave. So if somebody came onto my lawn, I said, hey, get out of here. And then they sat down for a couple of months. I don't think you could really say that they're in the process of leaving there. Yeah, I, I can see it. Yeah, I'm an evictionist, I guess. Hello? Yeah, hello. There we go. All right, cool. So thank you for being here. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing good. How are you doing? Doing pretty good, yeah. Good to hear. Yeah. So do you have any like uh, opening statements or anything you want to go uh, over? Yeah, I suppose it's just like if the trespasser is unable to leave or uh, sorry, if the trespasser is unable to engage in human action, like what they did wasn't intentional, they are leaving the premises of the property owner. They're not endangering the property owner's life. Uh, and eviction will result in the trespasser's death. I say it's more gentle to let the Chris Pass will continue their departure in this sort of situation. Okay, so this is uh, the um, the idea of, um, you know, it's, I think this is misunderstands the gentleness idea in libertarianism. Mm -hmm. I don't think the gentleness is saying the gentlest possible way that you could ever imagine to stop an aggression. Gentleness is mm -hmm. saying what is the gentlest way you can stop an aggression in the here and now? So it's, uh, you know, if, uh, you know, if I, if somebody's on my property and they're trying to steal from me, they're trying to rob my TV or something, I'm allowed to shoot at them. Even though, like, right. you know, that wouldn't be the gentlest possible way to get them off my property. The gentlest possible way would just be to let them steal my TV and have them walk off on their own. That'd be gentler. But that wouldn't stop the aggression. And in the same case with the uh, eviction versus departureism debate, when I, if I just uh, allow the fetus to kind of remain inside me uh, until it's viable, that doesn't actually stop the aggression at all. That is just waiting for the aggression to stop on its own accord. Uh, no, yeah, I, I totally understand, right? It's about... Um, uh gentleness in accord to like stopping the aggression right so if the trespasser is um leaving right on their own accord uh i believe um we should let them departure because that would be more gentle right so in the case like the robber right i think that's kind of disanalogous because um the uh trespasser or robber is like, expressing like intent or will um and they aren't leaving right I mean, I don't think it really matters because either way, it's still a person I don't want to have on my property. They still are a trespasser who yeah. I'm allowed to evict at any point. Um, I, I understand what you mean, right? So yeah, I 100% agree the fetus is a trespasser, right? But if the trespasser is, I believe, innocent, uh, unable to engage in intent, they're, and they're leaving the premises of the property owner, I believe it's more gentle to let them finish their departure, right? I think evictionism has, cause kind of destroys the host guest relationship, right? Like it would be legal for people to evict someone from their property by throwing them out of a nine story window, right? Instead of letting them spend like nine minutes departuring, right? It's kind of, um, yeah. Um, so this seems to be, you, you're saying the fetus is leaving the property, but I don't think they are leaving the property necessarily. You know, obviously if the mother is giving birth, she can then say, chop this baby out of me right now. You know, she's or the baby is already leaving her. So that would be the eviction is the baby leaving. But like, you know, if she's in month one, the baby isn't leaving her. The baby is remaining within her and it's going to remain within her for months more. So I don't think you really can say the baby is leaving the property. I see the, the whole process of gestation uh, as leaving. I see the entire process as leaving, even though I know what you mean. Like, oh yeah, it takes nine months, right? But I don't think that the time is really relevant. 
that makes sense. I think the whole process is is really just leaving. It could be nine minutes, nine months, nine seconds, whatever it is. I mean, it's like if to me. if I was like you know a tenant in somebody's property, and I was like, yeah, don't worry, buddy, I'll I'll leave nine months from now. You know, I I, I, I yeah. this is all this is all the process in me leaving. It's gonna take nine months for me to leave, but it will happen in nine months. I don't really think you can say that's part of the leaving when the um you know the landlord could just pick all my shit up, put it out on the curb, and say you're not allowed back in here. You know, that like that can be done a lot faster. Yeah. Um. So I'm not saying the the fetus has to stay in the uh the womb for nine months, right? I totally support you know artificial wombs. Um. Any way you can remove the the fetus as long as they're alive, right? I'm totally fine with that sort of situation. You're allowed to speed up the process. Yeah. Um, um, but like, what about before like viability and stuff? Because like, you know, there. Let's say there is like, that, I'm not like a doctor or anything. Let's just say there's one month of the pregnancy where it's going to be completely inviable with like some level of technology. Eve, I don't think it's right to say. I think it would be a positive obligation to, for the mother to have to keep the baby within her for the entire month there, because she could surely she should be allowed to just evict that baby at any point. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to draw a distinction between okay, I'll leave in nine months or I'll leave in one month versus you know actively leaving uh, for an entire month, right? So when I say hey, you know. I come to your house, right? I'm just sitting in your, your couch, right? And say, hey, dude, I'll leave in a week, right? Um, I see that as different, right? Because there's an intent expressed, right? Like, uh, I can uh, depart or like leave, right? But I, I've told you, hey, no, I'm not going to leave, right? I'll leave it another time. I see like that is different from like, okay, the fetus is literally leaving the womb. Like the whole process is like natural and the whole process of gestation is uh leaving to me i don't really think you could say that month one of pregnancy is the baby leaving the womb i think it's very much preparing to stay within the womb for many months it's like hunkering down almost mm -hmm. like if uh, i came in if i came into your house and just fell asleep like you know you couldn't say that that is me preparing to leave your house even though when i wake up i might like you know make myself some breakfast and then leave I'm st I'm still I'm not preparing to leave when I fall asleep. Yeah. Uh, uh, so like, if you do fall asleep, I think you can you know do what you can like to speed up pr the process, right? Like, could you know try to wake you up, you know, uh, ask you to leave, maybe threaten to call the police, maybe show a gun. Uh, you could do all, all sorts of things like that. Uh, and I believe you, that's the same thing as. Um, in pregnancy, right? You can, you know, evict the, the fetus into an artificial womb, like you know, as an evictionist. Uh, well, you say if you don't, yeah, I could, I could also evict you just out onto the streets. I could say I don't want this guy sleeping in my house. I he'd get out of my house, you know. I could pick you up, put you out on the road. I, you know, I could like you know alert like you know the local orphanage or whatever it would be for a fetus. You know, I'll alert people who might want to take care of you. That hey. I'm giving up. I'm giving you up because you know I don't want to be forestalling or anything. But like, I'm still allowed to evict at any point, even if you're like deep in sleep and you would definitely die if I evicted you. I'm still allowed to evict. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so if there is a way you can speed up the process of like departure, like okay, let me let me wake this guy up. Right, that would be a lot easier, right, than me like. Just picking it like I here, let me try to explain this better. Um, okay, so uh, like I, I agree with gentleness, that you know, you take the uh, minimum possible, you know, force, let's say, you know, I'm not gonna be like. Uh, you know, shooting a bazooka at some toddler who walked onto my garden or anything, you know. Yeah. I, ag I agree that you take the minimum possible to do the eviction. But I don't see how that means that I then allow the toddler to stay on my property until they grow up and become an adult and then go, oh yeah, I should probably leave. 
I don't think that is like I don't think that follows. I think the minimum possible can very much be deadly. I don't think the fact that it's deadly means that it's not the minimum possible. Because you you need to because the mother wants to stop this aggression now, so it's the minimum possible that she can get it done in the present, not a couple months down the line. Right. Uh, I just see it as. If the mother has a non-lethal way to uh, evict the fetus, then that method should be preferred, right? So letting the trespasser depart would be a non-lethal way they could get rid of the, the trespasser. Definitely. If she has a non-lethal way, that would be preferable to a lethal one. I agree entirely. But there are definitely going to be some parts of the pregnancy, and this is where departureism uh, changes, for, uh, like kind of differs from evictionism, I should say. That it's, uh, you know, there are some months in the pregnancy where it would be lethal. The only option for her to evict is a lethal way. And that's where evictionists say you're still allowed to evict there. That's, that's all we're saying. Mm -hmm. I think uh, surely the mother always has an option to evict the fetus in a non-lethal way, right? Like continuing pregnancy, right? Uh, well, that's, that's not evicting like, then, I though. Brought up the ninth, mm -hmm. That's, but that's not evicting, is it? If she just continues to allow the fetus to live within her until it's self-sufficient. Because if I just had, like, some tenant, I'm a landlord, and this tenant is going to die if he goes on the street. He has no job, he has no friends, he has nothing. And he's going to die if he doesn't have this shelter. I'm still allowed to evict this guy at any point, even if he would die because of my eviction. I don't need to wait for yeah. him to be self-sufficient for me to evict him. I see it at more, more as like, uh, let's say I invite a friend over to my nine story, uh, apartment, right? I see it as, okay. I told my friend, okay, you have to leave, right? Uh, I see it as, okay, pushing the trespasser or my friend outside of the window, the nine story window, instead of letting them, you know, take a couple minutes or like a couple seconds to, uh, depart by themselves, like go down the stairs or whatever. Well, no, because, but in that play, in that case, you did have the a way you could evict them non-lethally in the present, and also in that case, you have an implicit contract that they are allowed to leave non-peacefully. You don't have this implicit contract with a fetus because you can't get a contract with a fetus because a it can't make contracts; it didn't exist when the act of conception happened, right? So you can't. I can't make a concept. I can't make a contract with somebody who will be born a thousand years from now because they don't exist yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if the trespasser is unable to engage in implicit contract, like say I have a balloon, right, and I'm 5,000 feet in the air, and this baby uh, stuck, onto, stuck onto the balloon, maybe they're under some blankets, right? Would you, and if I wanted to evict the baby, is it justified to pick up the baby and drop the baby like 5,000 feet onto the ground? Um, I reckon you'd probably have some sort of forestalling issue there, um, you know, because mm. there might there probably be people who want to have this uh, baby pro this like title to take care of the baby. So you probably yeah. need to be, you know, informing some relevant like, you know, adoption agency or something uh, in keeping with the social norms of your society. OK, but. Uh Sure, right. Uh, so you, you would say it's illegal, right, or immoral, unethical, sorry, uh, to evict the baby, right, off this balloon, because it might have some uh, potential guardian? Uh, only, only in the case that has a potential guardian. If there was, like, it was, if it was just me and this baby in this world, then I could just toss it off. It wouldn't matter, because I can evict it. Okay, so wouldn't it take maybe, like, in, like an hour or a week to maybe, or sorry, like a day or a week to... Uh, Find a potential guardian, right? Like, what do you consider a potential guardian? Is it any uh, possible potential guardian? It is basically within keeping of like the uh, social norms of that society. So, in our current world, it would be you'd probably be contacting some orphanage or adoption agency, or just posting online or something like that. You know, if if you're in the middle of nowhere, then yeah, you can just evict this baby out into like a snowstorm or whatever it is. That is gonna kill it, whatever. That you're allowed to still evict, though. I would argue this eviction notification requirement sort of uh, can be applied to uh, pregnancy as well, right? So, 
there might be a potential guardian, right, for the fetus. So maybe I could try to find one and then maybe give birth or, you know, evict it into an uh, artificial womb. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. If you find some, uh, you know, guardian and they're like, hey, when you're evicting this baby, I want to have my medical personnel there to, you know, try and keep it alive. I completely agree with that. That's fine. You know, there are some things which they couldn't force, like, you know, if to keep the baby alive, it would need like a C-section. You can't have that happen because that is going to be like cutting the person open. You know, they can just say, hey, when you, this baby comes out of you, I want to have my medical personnel there to try and take care of it. That's that's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, say there's a case, right? Like, like I brought the hot air balloon, right? 5,000 feet in the air. They have to give... Uh, they have to allow like trespass of the baby for like a small period of time, right? I believe this period of time can be extended to pregnancy as well, even when the fetus isn't viable. Uh, explain that. Yeah, let me. I think I said that pretty quick. Uh, so yeah, like when I have the baby, right? Like in the hot air balloon, like I brought up beforehand. Um, so you bring the baby onto your hot air balloon. Oh no, sorry. Like the baby trespass. The baby trespassed onto my hot air balloon, sorry. Okay, Actually, so you didn't... Because I can't form an implicit contract with the, the fetus, right? Or the baby, right? Because they aren't... Yeah. can't even form one. I mean, I, so, I feel yeah. like if, if you're bringing it on there, you probably have some sort of guardianship over it. You know, it would need to be... Okay. no Because, like, if you just picked up some baby that belongs to somebody else, you know, true, and you true. bring it onto a, a hot air balloon, that, like, causes all sorts of problems. So, like, you know... Uh -huh. Should we just simplify this to say that you give birth on a hot air balloon? Sure. Yeah. Um, wait, arguably though, like if you give birth or like have sex or whatever, and you conceive a child, uh, isn't that like another way you can homestead guardianship of a child? Like it doesn't have to be explicitly like taken care. Well, yeah, you'd have, you'd have guardianship without a child. So you'd have to, you know, be taking care of them. And if you wanted to abandon that mm -hmm. child, then you'd have to notify other people. Yeah, okay. Uh, I see it like the same as pregnancy. Like, even if, like, let's say the fetus is in my, uh, in my womb or whatever, right? I am taking care of the fetus, right? So I'm still technically the guardian, right? Yeah. Okay, now, now let's go back to the hot air balloon, right? So let's say I was the guardian beforehand, right? Like, the mother might be, right? With the fetus in her, in her womb. Let's say I want to evict, uh, the uh the fetus or abandon the guardianship rights right um you would say it's it's better to wait to find like a potential guardian right like I, I have to give well to it's allow temporary trespass it's it's not necessarily about time it's about not forestalling like if i take a ch if i take a child up into my hot air balloon take it away from everybody and then say i'm abandoning this child now I'm hiding the fact that I have done that from everybody else. I've put barriers in place for potential homesteaders of the, uh, you know, guardianship over the child. Okay. So that, that is the uh, issue there. It's the forestalling issue. Well, can it be applied to um, pregnancy as well? Like, okay. Like, I, I'm the only person who can take care of this child, right? At this given moment. Isn't that technically forestalling? No, if, if literally nobody else is able to take care of the child, then you're not forestalling from anybody. You could evict and, you know, nobody, you're not holding away the ability to take care of the child from anybody because nobody could possibly take care of the child. Sure, but it's the same with like the balloon, right? Like in the hot air balloon, I'm the only person at this given moment who could take care of this child, right? But, you know, it may be like an hour or like couple hours when i get home i can then transfer guardianship right to someone it's else. but like in when the child is you know valuable on their own like that it's not you're only the able to take care of them because you've locked them basically in a hot air balloon with you that's the only reason that you're only able to do it they physically could be taken care of other people if they're in other situations before a fetus mm -hmm. it can literally only be taken care of by the mother if it was removed from the mother and given to somebody else, just holding in their arms, they would die pretty quickly, right? So that is right, not a true. forestalling issue. Um, yeah, that's true, I guess. Uh, 
Okay, what if the... What if I wasn't the guardian, right? Of the baby, right? And they were just on my hot air balloon. Would it be fine if I evicted the, the baby? I think you still kind of run into a forestalling issue there. Same with like, you know, if I just find some unowned land and I fence it off, you know, I, I don't own that land. I'm not abandoning that land, but I still am forestalling it, you know? So I think it runs into the same problems. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I think it's like the baby trespassed, right? Maybe unintentionally, right? Like they're an innocent trespasser, like the fetus. Uh, sure. Uh, hot air balloon, right? Is I mean, wh whether you abandon them or not, I think it's the same principles in play. You, like, you know, they, in either case, they unintentionally trespass. I don't think it matters whether you used to be their guardian and abandoned them. I think either way you'd be forestalling to keep them on your hot air balloon and then just go, oh, I don't want this, you know, so and then destroy the property. Like Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter if the forestalling is like intentional or not intentional, right? Um, don't know what you mean by that. Like, uh, do they do they have to like? Are you asking if they have to know what forestalling is? Uh, oh, sorry, I think I misunderstood you. Never mind. Uh, just like put that aside. I guess. Uh, I right. thought you meant like the the mother or like the person on the hot air balloon intentionally brought the baby with them, right, just to kill them. They yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, no. Uh, I, I'm still like struggling to find like a distinction between forestalling in the uh, in the womb and like on the hair, hot air balloon, right? Because in both cases, you cannot find another guardian at that given moment. And sure, oh. you know, like if you were in a given, if you were in a different situation, um, like if I was back at my house, I could probably find a guardian, right? Uh, but I think it's the same as saying, okay, if the fetus was a bit older, if the fetus was viable in a different situation, then the fetus uh, would have a guardian, potential guardian. I think this is the um, uh, difference between the positions. Like, um, I don't think it's just to say, like, okay, you need to wait for this amount of time to... Because uh, in the departure's case, it's you wait till it's viable, then you're allowed to go out and search for somebody who wants to take care of it. Whereas in the evictionist case, we're saying, you don't have to wait at all. You just have to look for somebody who's willing to take care of it. You know, if somebody says, yep, I'm willing to have my medical personnel there uh, when you give birth to this, uh, when you like evict this definitely going to be inviolable baby, uh, you know, that's fine. And, you know, if it's definitely going to be inviolable in that moment, I'm pretty sure you have nobody who is, you know, going to be wanting to take care of it. Nobody wants that property at that moment. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, both is ultimately like just waiting a given amount of time, right? Both is just like, okay, I have to allow the trespasser to, uh, I don't, I don't think the force, property. the forestalling case, the forestalling uh, point isn't about the number, the amount of time it takes. So it's not, it doesn't necessarily, it could take place theoretically in zero amount of time. It doesn't yeah. care about the amount of time. It cares about whether you are keeping this property from other potential guardians. That's what it, that's what it cares about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so yeah, in the hot air balloon, I would be keeping the baby from other potential guardians. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, uh, the... The evictionists and the for and the um, uh, departureists, we actually agree on basically everything. It's just yeah. on this one thing of which is the gentlest thing. So I think mm -hmm. it. Yeah, I don't think you can really say that is a gentleness justification to force somebody to allow an aggression to keep carry on until its natural conclusion basically, which uh -huh. is essentially what the departure's case is. I think that is, you know, completely misinterpreting what gentleness is. I think gentleness is instead saying that you take the minimum possible amount of force on the other person to stop the aggression. And that may well be murder. That may, not murder actually, because that would be, imply some sort of aggression. It may well imply the death of the other person, I should say. Mm -hmm. uh, I have an issue with like 
the implicit contract bit. Uh, so, like, let's say there's like a little child, right, who's unable to uh, engage in an implicit contract, and they trespass on my property. Would it be justified to throw them out of a nine-story window instead of letting them spend like the nine minutes departure? Like, if there was no implicit contract, like, what happens? Well, you'd have some sort of implicit contract with their parents, I assume. There, because you know, it's um, you're saying yes, uh, child, you can come on here. You, it's it's not aggression against the child per se; it's aggression against the pair, the guardians of the child. That's where um, you know, aggressions against latent self owners tend to go to fall into. Uh, what if the child was just like? Like, what if no implicit contract was formed? Like, let's say the parents weren't involved. They were just trespassing on my property. Um, I, I still think, you know, you, you kind of, because you couldn't just throw the parents out the window, obviously. So I don't think you could throw the child out either. I think the child would be in the same category as the guardians and you put them out the gentlest way, right? Yeah, but then again, there's no implicit contract form, right? There's no, no implicit contract form with the child, because the child can't make mm-hmm. contracts yet. But there is implicit contract formed with, uh, you know... So, what is the exact situation here, where like they just walk onto your property? Yeah, basically just a... Yeah. Like, the, the parents aren't involved at all. I mean, then they would, you'd have like gentleness applied to the parents there. So I think you'd probably also have gentleness applied to the latent self owner in this case, the uh, guarded individual. I think I could probably accept that. Uh, then wouldn't you be conceding to departureism, right? Because if there's no implicit contract, right, then you're preferring a non-lethal way to departure the the child, right? Which would be, okay, let them let them take like 10 minutes or 9 minutes, right, to leave by themselves. I mean, I don't really, my evictionism doesn't really care about implicit contracts because it doesn't say there is an implicit contract with the child. So I don't see how that does. Therefore, see to any ground of departureism you would still be forestalling if you like you know well not even forestalling you'd be destroying the property of another like if somebody came onto my property you know un- unknowingly and they had like a brand new computer with them and I just smashed that computer in front of them and said get off you know that would clearly be aggression and I think it would be a, a, also well, aggression I mean, in the case of the child yeah but uh Say like somebody's dog, right, comes onto my property, right? I can't just shoot their dog, right? That wouldn't, that wouldn't be very gentle, right? It's not necessarily like there's an implicit contract. It just said, okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, I agree. I agree. So it does, yeah. I don't think the implicit contract point really matters because I don't think uh-huh. either of us think there's an implicit contract to yeah. keep the fetus alive. I don't think either of us care about implicit contracts in the case with a fetus because you can't make an implicit contract with a fetus. So then why would it be better to let the child or dog uh, leave themselves? Well, like- uh, well, in that case, well, like, it's, it's the, the gentleness principle, right? Yeah. So if, if you just had, like, a child wander on, I think you, that would be somewhat destruction of another property if you just destroyed it like that, right? You can, e- you can far easier, like, you know, you have this because they're in this guardian position, it's like, you know, it's, uh, one of my friends there says, it's analogous to an encrypted will that somebody has to keep intact until they can decrypt it. You know, if they drop the USB drive. About, yeah. You, what were you saying? I don't think it's about, uh, sorry, yeah. I don't think it's about, um, destroying someone else's property. I think it's about, like, gentleness, right? Because they're trespassing, right? I can, uh, I can theoretically destroy the property. Like if the, the dog attacks me, right? I can theoretically, you know, defend myself. I think it's about gentleness, not so, like because there's like me destroying their property. Sure. So it's about, gen- let's just say it's about gentleness. How does this like lose yeah. 
eviction is a many ground. Well, I mean, uh, well, you told me that uh, it would be preferable to let the uh, the child leave by themselves, right? I think that that's because of gentleness, not because you would be destroying their uh, sure. property. Yeah, so uh, sure, that, that's, uh, let's just say that's because of a gentleness principle there. Mm -hmm. But why does that lose eviction some ground? Because then you'd be saying it's, uh, it's okay to uh, let a non-innocent or like an innocent trespasser to leave by themselves. Yeah, and uh, eviction, evictionists are fine with letting innocent uh, the, and, but the baby doesn't want to leave by itself is the thing in the womb. Evictionists are fine with, you know, gentleness in case of, you know, if somebody just walks onto your lawn, you say, hey, get out of here. And then they get out of here. That's, that's perfectly fine with evictionism. But what isn't fine is if they, uh, you know, if they walk onto your lawn and then collapse into a coma and then it's like, no, you've got to keep, take care of them until like, you know, uh, nine months later when they wake up. Right, it's you are still allowed to evict at any point, keeping within gentleness. Gentleness just means the minimum possible force to stop the aggression in the here and now, not however long it might take for it to stop on its own. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, the child in a way doesn't really have mens rea or whatever you call it. Uh, yeah, I agree. Can't enter a contract. Right. So then why then um how can we consider the child to actively be stopping the trespassing? What do you mean? Like, okay, so if the child doesn't have so I'm not talking about like the baby in the womb. I'm talking about like the child mm -hmm. and the trespasses. Um So like just some child walks room. onto my lawn. Right, yeah, something like that. Um so you said, okay, yeah, uh, gentleness is totally fine with somebody leaving by themselves, right? But technically, right, this child doesn't have mens rea. So, like, how do we know they're actively, like, leaving? If that makes sense. I don't know how you'd need to... I don't know why you'd need to have mens rea to know if they're leaving. Like, if somebody walks into my lawn and then I say, hey, get out of here, and I see them walk the other direction, I think you can say that they're leaving. Yeah, I think that's the same with um, pregnancy, right? So, sure, it takes nine months. Sure, it's like very slow. Um, if, sure it's if, like, there's other things involved. If somebody walked onto my lawn and I said, hey, get out of here, and then they started walking so very slow in the other direction that it took them nine months to get out, I think you could say they're not really leaving. And, you know, if... it's not even, I don't think it's even like that, because they aren't, like, progressively leaving the womb the entire time. They get into your... In, they get into the womb, and then they grow a whole bunch. They just sit there for basically nine months okay. and then leave. So if somebody came onto my lawn, I said, hey, get out of here, and then they sat down for a couple of months. I don't think you could really say that they're in the process of leaving there. Yeah, that's true. Or I'll, I'll concede to you on that, yeah. That's fair. Um, yeah, it's not really like them leaving. They're kind of just there for nine months. Yeah. So what, did, what else did we have um, disagreement on? I think we were... Uh, I'm not sure if we settled that. I think something else we were talking about was uh, guardianship, right? Uh, sure. So, um, what exactly was it? Because I don't, I don't think it really, like, lost any ground for evictionism. It was like, you know, if uh, some child comes onto your property mm -hmm. with the parents, you have to apply gentleness to them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Evictionism already accepts gentleness. That's fine in evictionism. Yeah. So I don't understand how that loses evictionism any ground in this debate. Okay. Um, I think more specifically, I think we were talking about like, okay, the hot air balloon, for example, right? Like you were keeping the baby, right? From the rest of society or potential guardians. Like you've kind of forestalled. I think... Um, I think it can still be applicable like to pregnancy, right? Cause like, okay, let's say the baby was in someone else's womb, right? They could also technically take care of the baby or the fetus. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, 
but we, we can't physically put it into another person's womb is the thing. So if, you know, it's, if, if, it's, in, if it's in my womb and mm-hmm. I want this baby evicted right now and literally nobody else on earth thinks that they can take care of this baby, I, I don't see how you th- can say that I'm forestalling by evicting the baby. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I just think like in a way you are keeping the, the fetus, even if it's not intentional, you, in a way you are keeping the fetus from other potential guardians, right? Like, not any, yeah, it's not possible. Not any potential but, guardians in the present, potential guardians in the future perhaps, but libertarianism doesn't care about the future. It cares about the here and now. Well, I mean, it's, it's the same with uh, the hot air balloon, right? Okay, sure, like in the present, there's no potential guardian, right? But in the future, when I get back home, there are potential guardians. No, the but that's, that, that's just about position. Like, uh, if, I, if I walked out into the woods with a fully viable fetus and then evicted it out in the woods and said, you know, and didn't tell anybody about it, there's nobody in... I don't, I'm, not, I'm not talking about the immediate vicinity. I'm talking about, you know what you could reasonably hope to get to within the social norms of your society. So, you know, if you had, like, a phone with access to the internet, you could say, hey, adoption agency, I want to evict my fetus right now. And then they'd say, okay, we'll send some doctors down, we'll evict it for you. You know? That'd be, yeah. that'd be fine. True. Uh... Yeah, like it's literally not possible to pick the fetus. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so do we? Uh, so do we agree on that then? Yeah, I I can see it. Yeah, I'm an evictionist, I guess. <laughs> You know, I, I, I did, this will be my first published debate where I've actually managed to agree with somebody on something. No, nah, man, it was a good argument. Yeah. I had to concede because, yeah. I, I did have another one before, but then it, I fucking didn't record the audio for it because I was an idiot. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, if this doesn't work, we can stage it, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, the evictionist destroys the park twist in one second. GG. That was a pretty good debate, yeah. Yeah, it was a good debate, yeah. Thanks for clearing that up. Yeah, uh, thanks for coming. Also, uh, if I can start making libertarian content, you fucking faggot. <laughs> for sure, dude, yeah. Alright, yeah, uh, peace out. Yep, see ya.